Thank you, Madam Chair. Secretary Carson, I've waited a long time uh, for this moment, um, but the residents of my district, the 7th Congressional in Massachusetts, have been waiting far longer for your agency to do its job. Um, colleagues across the aisle uh, earlier uh, were critical of the passion um, and even the outrage that uh, we've expressed on this side of the aisle. I'd make no apologies for that. Uh, this matter is very, very personal. Uh, let me be clear, housing is a fundamental human right and the displacement of families should be regarded as the public health crisis that it is. Mr. Secretary, your pioneering work in pediatric neurology uh, is historic and uh, it is something to be uh, commended. And so it pains me that your gifted hands and mind are doing the bidding and carrying the water of what I believe to be one of the most morally bankrupt presidents in our nation's history. Increasing writs, evicting families. You mentioned that the operating room was a safe haven away from all the troubles of the world. Safe haven, that's exactly what a home should be and what every single person, and in particular our children, uh, deserve. Uh, today you are not here as a doctor or even as our servant, Surgeon General, which I think might be better suited for your talents, but as the official task with leading the agency overseeing our nation's crumbling housing stock. And for that, I do believe you are unqualified. Uh, you said this was um, not a political uh, matter, but it does seem that political views are being played out in the policies that are being rolled out every single day. Uh, when you imply that um, people are uh, living in public housing, either because of a, a desire to be self-sufficient, questioning a work ethic, uh, when we are uh, eliminating a stock but not increasing supply, people in the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District would have to work 84 hours to afford a decent one-bedroom at fair market rent. Doris Bunty, uh, who's a former Massachusetts State Representative in my district and was the first African-American woman to hold uh, the position of head of BHA, the first uh, public housing tenant to lead a public housing agency in a major city. She said being poor is not a character flaw. I agree. But again, given your medical background, perhaps you could weigh in on the health consequences of failing to invest in safe housing. Mr. Secretary, since I am short on time here, yes or no, is stable and safe housing a social determinant of health? Sounds like you have not been here and heard most of my testimony. Please just answer the question, reclaiming my time. Yes or no, is stable and safe housing a social determinant of health? Uh, there is no question that housing is an important part of Yes health. or no? No question that it's a part of health. It is well documented that health problems such as lead poisoning, asthma, and injuries from trips and falls, especially amongst our senior population, can be linked to substandard housing conditions. Combined, these conditions result in billions a year in health care costs. Many of those most at risk of developing these conditions reside in public and federally assisted housing. Yes or no? If less left unaddressed, do you believe the substandard public housing conditions pose a risk to tenants' physical, mental, and emotional health? If left unaddressed. Yes or no, can you ask me some questions yourself? You don't get to dictate what my line of questioning stuff. is, reclaiming my time. You're a very smart you man, so you understand your... the question, please answer it. The, the, yes or no, the, if left unaddressed, which I believe they are unaddressed because this budget does not reflect the need, do you believe the substandard public housing conditions pose a risk to tenants' physical, mental, and emotional health? Uh, you already know the answer to that. Yes or no? You know the answer. Yes or no? I know the answer. Do you know the answer? Yes or no? Reclaiming my time. You don't get to do that. No. The time belongs to the gentle lady. The evidence is clear that if we do not invest the necessary funds today, we will pay the price in people's health tomorrow. And what is this administration's response? Cuts. Cuts to crucial funding like the Public Housing Operating Fund and the Family Self-Sufficiency Program, Section 202 Housing for Elderly and Section 811, Housing for Persons with Disabilities, and even the complete elimination of the Public Housing Capital Fund. These policies are devoid of empathy and humanity, and you've been talking in the abstract, but I want to get specific. There's a Miss Northcross, a mother and a grandmother living in Brighton in my district. She's raised her children and now cares for her grandchildren in property with thick mold on the walls. Her son was recently hospitalized, look at the pictures here, because of bone tumors in his arm and leg. He needs surgery to save and improve his quality of life, but he won't get it because the family must have a sanitary, stable housing condition first. Their actual home literally poses a risk of post-op injury and infection. Her question to you is, what do they become? When you raise children in these conditions, what can they become? So yes or no? Do Ms. Norcross and her family deserve and live in these conditions because they are poor? 
If you've listened to any yes or no, do they I deserve to, to live say, in these conditions because they are you poor? You know very well. Would you let your grandmother live in public housing? You know very well. Would you let your I grandmother live in public this. housing, yes or no? You know very well. Under your watch and at your helm, would you allow your grandmother to live in public housing under these conditions? It would be very nice if, if you would stop acting. You've stated that the, the gentleman from Florida.